Hey, it's Yuka. In this video, I wanted to show you the four must-have Mac apps that make my life so much easier. I love using and discovering Mac apps and have a few more videos about it on this channel already, so you can check them out here or from the description below. The first app I want to talk about is Bartender. This is a pretty classic app in my opinion and it's been around for a long time. There's a lot you can do with Bartender, but I actually use it as a menu bar organizer. If you have a MacBook with a notch on the top, this is a must have to be able to organize and declutter your menu bar. My main machine is a MacBook Pro that I usually have connected to two big monitors, but even with the big screens, I like having the menu bar organized and distraction free. So here's how Bartender works. I'm already running Bartender right now, so the menu bar it looks pretty clean, although I have a few things lined up here. If I didn't have Bartender, this is how many icons there would be. Everything I don't really need at the moment is hidden, but I can still access it right away from this little icon. And on Bartender, there's a ton of different settings that you can customize. Some of the more important details are, for example, the Bartender menu bar icon. Right now I set it to the dot 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 icon, but you can have these fancy bartender or bow tie, or you can even choose your own image. So let me choose something fun. I'm gonna choose this little yuka emoji because it's so cute. And now I have my little icon here to be able to access all the different settings. The other thing is that you can customize your menu bar layout. So here you can kind of like drag and drop where things should be and hide any items that you don't want. So for example, if I don't want Dropbox anymore, I can move it over here and it will move to the hidden menu bar section. You can also hide things to be always hidden if you don't want it to be you know, shown all the time. Even when I press this icon to show more, if I don't even want that to be here, I can drop it in the always hidden menu bar items. There's even more granular details here. For example, battery, you can only show when the battery is not connected to power because if it is connected to power, you don't really have to worry about your remaining battery life. But maybe if you are not connected, you wanna see it on the menu bar. So that's how I have it set up. There's a ton of different things that you can do and customize from all these different things. But for now, this is what I have. The next app I wanna talk about is Raycast. Raycast is an app launcher that I've been using in the last few months, and I've completely replaced the Max Spotlight feature with it. Raycast can do so many things and it even has its own app store. So maybe I'll do a more in-depth video on all of the things, but in this one, I'll just keep it to the basics. So here are some of the basic things you can do with Raycast. One of the most prominent things will be to search for apps and or files. So here I just did command space to open Raycast up and I have all these apps that I've recently opened. As suggestions, I have some other commands which we'll get into a little bit later. Basically, it's very similar to your basic spotlight on Mac where you can search for and open up certain apps. However, what makes it interesting is that there's so much more you can do with it. For example, you can even search for your clipboard history. If I type in clipboard history, I can see all of the things that I have been copying <laughs> to my clipboard. And for example, you can even search here I'm looking for something that I've shared before and or you can even filter with certain types of files. Another thing that I have completely replaced with Raycast is my emoji selection. If you do the keyboard shortcut command control space on your Mac, the regular emoji selector will come up, but I have that set to this Raycast version, which is a little bit more reliable and 
user-friendly, I guess. In this emoji selector, I can search for emoji. I can pin certain things that I like. So let's say I like this dizzy emoji that I guess I frequently use. Um, I can command K to pin emoji so that it's always up here and I can easily copy or type into different apps. This has been really useful. I know that the max command control space emoji shortcut sometimes doesn't work on certain areas or surfaces. I don't know if it's a bug or what's going on, but this has been much more reliable to use for me. Another thing you can do is create snippets. For example, you can create a snippet. Let's say, follow me. This is something that I type out all of the time and I don't want to always be finding these URLs and making sure I typed it correctly, etc. I can make this into a snippet. So let's say I'll do at follow as like a little keyword and command enter to save that. Now what I can do is if I type at follow, it will automatically kind of populate the snippet that I just saved. If used extensively and in a clever way, this should be really useful for your workflow. Another thing that I highly recommend to use is the hotkeys. So if I go to the actions menu and go to configure applications, these are all of the apps in my Mac right now. And I have hotkeys set to some of the apps that I always use. So for example, DaVinci Resolve, I have it set to option D, 1Password as option 1, and Finder as option F. So I just did option F, and now DaVinci Resolve is opening up. If I press option D when something else is open, it will just like bring it up to the front. This is also very useful when I have a lot of apps open. And of course you can do command tab to cycle through and find what you're looking for. But when you have a ton of things open, it's just easier to just go and say, I want this app to open. So I feel like I've only scratched the surface of what Raycast can do and plan on diving deeper in the future. Let me know if you already use Raycast and if you do what your favorite use cases are. If you're interested in another video on this, please let me know and we can make that happen. CleanShot X is my go-to app for doing anything related to screenshotting and screen recording. I use this all the time for these kind of videos where I want to show you how to do something on a Mac. For this video currently, I'm not using it because if I was, I wouldn't be able to show you what's going on on CleanShot X if I were. So I have CleanShot X saved to Command Shift 5 and I can have this menu bar pop up whenever I want to do a screenshot or a screen recording. In terms of screenshot, you can select an area, full screen or just a window and you can even do the scrolling screenshot if you want to take a long screenshot with a web page for example. And for video recording, you can choose to have your clicks highlighted and show your keystrokes as well. Um, another favorite feature of mine is to be able to select the aspect ratio. Usually my videos are 16 by 9, so it really helps me if I know where it will be, it'll be cut off. So I can do that here and start recording like this. You can even save it as a GIF if you want to or a video. Let's take a random screenshot right now. So here I just took a screenshot. I can edit stuff on this screenshot as well. If I had something that was sensitive or you know my address was showing or something, I can hide it with these pixelated mosaic filter. I can also annotate with arrows like this. I can draw freely if that's what you're into. Um, of course, I can add different shapes. You can even make things a little bit prettier by adding a background to your screenshots. 
And you can even mess with the padding, the shadows, and the corners. It's very, very versatile. And one of the great things is that you can drag this file anywhere. You can drag it to your finder, you can drag it to anywhere that you want to post it, drag it to your Notion. So it's very easy and you don't have to go back and forth in different apps to do things with your screenshot. Last but not least, Daisy Disk is a lifesaver for me because I deal with lots of big video files and project files for my videos and my SSDs get cluttered really fast. Daisy Disk scans your computer and any external drives that you have connected and lets you see what's taking up the most space. So let me just add my SD card in here so you can see what it looks like when I have an SD card. This one's also pretty full, so I need to declutter this as well. But the stress that you have when this becomes further to the right and it's like becoming full, I hate it. So I want to scan my disk. So here you can see very visually what files are taking up the most space and what are the, like, the directories these files are in. So for example, in my case, I have so many videos and files in this folder, which is literally called videos. And this is where I keep all of my video projects. So you can see that I have like the made by Google event file was 148 gigs. So maybe when I'm done with this, I mean, I, I guess I am kind of done. So I can move this to my other like archival SSD and I can delete what's on here. Okay, this seems like something that I can delete. So this is like a cache clip, I guess. I'm kind of scared, but I don't think I need this. So I can drag this over here and drop it. And if I press delete here, it'll just permanently delete and I don't have to do anything with like the garbage bin. It'll just like completely delete your file for you. So I am not gonna do this just in case and I don't wanna mess up my cache files. I'll have to do that somewhere else, but you get the idea. Okay, so those were my four favorite apps to level up your Mac. On this channel, I'm sharing how your real life can be made better with tech. So if you like videos like this, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.